Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the Welcome of to God the News Network where the saints are rising, where we are here to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? By listening to God News Network and, of course, the Holy Spirit and the living Word of God. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight as I have my friend and God said I will send you out by twos. And he has. Albert Delgado is my other half and uh, he is with me today from South Carolina. How are you doing, Brother Albert? This is a good week, Rick. Doing real good. <laughs> Thank God. Yes, sir. Amen to that. You have got that right. It is not only a good week, it is a great week because God is good and God is always good, isn't he? That is right, Rick. That is right. Well, today I'm really excited because <clears throat> the mystery, I've heard so many teachings on the horses and read books on the horses and everything else, but tonight we're going to do something a little different. God showed me all of a sudden in the last couple of weeks, he says, you've been studying this in the wrong language. I'm like, what? English? I don't know another language. He says, Look at the Greek of the words of each verse. And what are we talking about? The horses of the apocalypse. This is really just an amazing teaching. First of all, where are the horses of the apocalypse taught? Where are they taught? There's two places in the Bible. You know one of them, Albert. Well, one of them is in Revelation. Right on, brother. It is. It's in Revelation chapter 6. 666. Six, six. Revelation chapter 6. <laughs> the other one is in Zechariah chapter 6. Isn't that ironic? Hmm. And it's Revelation chapter 6, verses 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, and there it is. There it is. These are the seven seals. Now, what's really interesting is we are going to go through the first four seals because each seal happens to represent a beautiful rendition of the seals of God. So he's going to cover it. If we look at Revelation, we, we need to understand what is Revelation about. And if we go back to Revelation chapter 1, it tells us right in the beginning exactly what it is all about. There you go. I'm going to blow that up. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants, us, Things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, mm. who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. So this is the testimony of Jesus Christ as well, and of all things that he saw. Who saw? John. So John bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. Hmm. This is one of the books that comes with a, a promise to you. So, it is that you are blessed for he that reads it and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So there's two different blessings. We've got a blessing for those that hear it and those that read it. With that in mind, 
We're going to jump right in here to the revelation of the horses. But before we do, normally I jump right into Revelation 6, 1, two, 1 through 8. But in this case, we're going to go to a different place first. We're going to go to Zechariah, and we're going to go to chapter 6, and we're going to look at the horses there first. Because this is going to set up the stage for what God showed me in the Greek about the horses. And this is a new revelation uh, for me as well. And I've already ran it by another uh, one of our compadres in the mission field for Christ. And uh, he gave me the thumbs up as well that, yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> you, you can't deny it. So, and uh, is in agreement that that is. So tonight, <clears throat> You are going to hear this live before anybody else gets to hear it. Zechariah 6, verse 1. Here we go. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains. And the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second, black horses, and in the third, white horses, and in the fourth, grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, what are these, my Lord? Small L, not Jesus, but the angel, he called my Lord. And the angel answered and said unto me, these are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. So these go out unto the earth. And these are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. Now, what's really interesting is we are going to go and we're going to go back to Revelation chapter 6. Here we go. Revelation chapter 6, and I saw... When the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Brother Albert, when you've heard this taught in the past, when it says he that set on him had a bow, what comes to mind from what's been taught in the past? Well, I, I guess a, uh, like a bow will be something that has to do with a uh, military or something, right? That's what's been taught. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're about to see something very amazing here. We're going to go to the Greek words, and literally word by word, we're going to look at some of this stuff, and it really unveils a mystery. And it says, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him, on him, so it's a, it's a him, mm -hmm. okay, had a bow. This word is Strong's G5115, and here is the correct pronunciation of that. Strong's G5115, toxin, toxin. So we have toxin. Sounds like something that the chemical is in your body. It's yeah. negative. Here's what it is. It's from the base of Strong's G5088. Eight, a bow, apparently as the simplest fabric. 
It has nothing to do with a bow and arrows. It's a fabric bow. Now, let's ask this question. Brother Albert, when someone approaches us and they say, you know, they've got a fabric and it's a bow, what mm -hmm. do we associate with a bow that's fabric? A woman. We associate a woman, possibly. What is it something that's put on gifts? Mm. A bow. A bow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Immediately when I saw this, that's what the Spirit told me. This is a bow because he's presenting a gift. Mm. Now, let's dive in just a little bit further here. And we're going to go back. Whoops. Go back to where we were. And it had a bow. And it also had a crown. This is interesting. This is Stephanos. Stephanos. Let's listen. Strong's G, 4735. Stephanos. Stephanos. Okay, St. Rick, you are corrected. It's Stephanos. <laughs> okay. I love it. A crown. A mark of royal or in general, exalted rank, the wreath or garland, which was given to a prize, as a prize to victors in public games. The metaphor, the eternal blessedness, which will be given as a prize to the genuine servants of God in Christ. The crown, which is the reward of the righteousness. Hmm. Is that amazing? Wow. So now we know that if we look at it, we have a bow and a, and a crown, which is the gift of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's starting to open up to us that he's got a gift for us. And it's the hmm. gift of righteousness. And it was given unto him, and he went forth conquering. Let's look up the word conquering. Here's Strong's G3528. Strong's G3528. Nikao. Nikao. Okay. Nikao. To carry off the victory, come off victorious. Not to destroy <laughs> of Christ, victorious over all his foes wow. of Christians that hold fast their faith, even unto death against the power of their foes and temptations and persecutions. So we got That's all incredible. these beautiful, incredible definitions, and then which one do they pick? When one is arraigned or goes to law to win the case, maintain one's cause. Here's what's beautiful. This applies as well. Did Jesus go to the law and win the case and maintain one's cause? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> What does this have to do with conquering all the and slaughtering all these people? Nothing. Nothing, brother. Nothing, 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 nothing. And uh, so now let's read the verse and we'll continue. So and let's let's read the verse like like how we read it with the dictionary. And I saw and behold a white horse, and and he the sat and the horse. And him had a bow or a a, 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 a a bow and a gift of righteousness that he has given unto them and and he has went forth and conquered the law so they could receive the gift. 
Yes. So now let me ask you this question. If we read all this in the Greek, just like it says, with the meanings, who is that? It's Who's, Christ. It's Christ. He's the rider on the bow. He's the rider on the white horse. It's so clear. I saw and behold a white horse. I saw and behold a white horse. And Christ that set on him had a gift in his hand. And it was a gift of righteousness unto him. Hmm. And he went forth and conquered the law and was victorious over it. Hmm. So that we could receive that gift. And that's basically what he says in the rest of the Bible, that he made a spectacle of the law. He, he, he drove, you know, uh, this is something that we have read before, uh, that uh, he, uh, you know how in the, uh, in the old kingdoms, that whenever the conquerors came and presented uh, the gifts to the king of what they had won, they, 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 they bring him in as a parade and back, you know, like saying, Look at I, I conquer all these fools. I was bigger, and you, king, are bigger than all these guys. Now you are the king of all this. <laughs> Is that awesome or what, Albert? That's that's incredible. That have is you, incredible. Have you ever heard that preached? Now here's a question, though. Yeah. Is this? You know, there's parts like we have talked before. There's parts in the book of Revelation that talk about things that have happened already mm -hmm. and also things that will, that will happen. Mm -hmm. Now, will this be the conquering <clears throat> of, of our souls that already happened? Or will it be already the conquering of the flesh and redeeming of the flesh for the saints? Well, let's ask ourselves this question. This will be answered within the questions. I saw and behold a white horse, and he said on him, had a bow, he had a gift. And a crown of righteousness was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and he conquered. Did that occur? Yes. Absolutely it occurred. Yes. And this, it says in Zechariah, the white horse and all these horses represent spirits that go to and from, from the heavens. Where did so you, this thing, so this thing right here, at least with the white horse, as we read right now, with the white horse, is something that has occurred already. He absolutely. has conquered death. He has yes. conquered sin, and he has put in all of his people that accepted him the crown of righteousness. <laughs> yes. So here's what's really cool. Does that mean the first seal has been opened? No. Ah, it has already been opened, and it is done. The first seal is done. Ooh, that, and, we're in the seven seals. Yes, we are. And wait till you find out where we're at. And, and what's amazing is that he says it. He says it that we're in that time. From the time that he died, he says that you're in this time. You're in this time. That makes sense now when you go back and read some of the verses in Matthew that deal with that. All that starts to make sense. If this is the revealing of Jesus Christ, which it says in the very first verse, chapter 1, it makes sense that he's the first horse. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's about him. It's not about, ooh, destruction and all this goofy stuff. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be some crazy, weird destruction stuff happening but it's the revealing of jesus christ and we got to stay focused on him so as we read in the greek we see that this bow is nothing to do with someone who's going out and going to destroy with this bow and arrow thing that i've heard preached all over the planet mm -hmm. and i've yet to hear anybody preach it this way but this is the truth it is a mm -hmm. bow it is a is a fabric. A fabric bow is what you use to wrap around a gift. And I've got this gift for you guys. And it's a crown of righteousness, baby. And I'm going to win. And I've already won. Yeah. <laughs> and he's showing everybody his victory. 
he's 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 like like we what we what we say he's making a spectacle. You know how the chariots here comes the warrior and he's in the chariots with with horses and then back are those all the slaves and all these people that he conquered. So he's coming in this white horse with this gift saying, I have conquered this. I have conquered this. And for whom did I conquer this? I conquered this for my people. Yes. And, 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 and instead of a king standing in front, what he has is the, is the crowds of his people, him bringing this gift and showing them what he has conquered and, and the, giving them the gift. And the word nikao, one of the definitions is of Christians that hold fast their faith, even unto death. So it has multiple meanings. It's also you conquering by holding fast to his faith, their faith, his faith. So it's not just his victory. It's your victory of continual conquering. So it's the thing of the past. It's the thing of the present. And it's the thing of the future, all wrapped up in a nice bow. <laughs> as a gift from God himself unto you and against you have even unto death against the power of your foes and temptations and persecutions because he was one who was arraigned or went to the law and he won the case and he maintained your cause. It's a continual maintaining of your cause. (laughs) Praise God. That's why. That's why there's no more room for the devil in heaven because he won the victory. It's over with. Right. And uh, we have talked about this before that the devil was was taken out of heaven and like lightning he fell to the earth because it was all over for him up there in heaven. He can't, since the law has been conquered, he can no more accuse anybody. And you know, this, this goes back even to Genesis the first seal was the very first word God spoke. Mm-hmm. Very first word in the beginning was Barashit, which means each letter that says the Son of God destroys the works of man by the cross. It's the first seal. Yeah. Oh, how beautiful God's word is going forth. It's living and it's growing. The veil is being removed. We are in the first seal. Oh, or are we? Let's dig down to seal number two. What's behind door number two? (laughs) This is awesome. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, we're in Revelation 6, 3, for those of you listening, Revelation 6. Three, And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. So those on earth should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. Let's dive into this one and see who this one is. If we look at the Greek, and there went out another horse that was red. It's truly the word, pyros. It's red, or however you pronounce that word. Let's check it out. Strong's G, 4450. Puras. 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 Thayer's Lexicon, Related Entry, Puras, Puras. And it says, red, having the color, it's very specific, red. It says, fire, (laughs) having the color of fire. Hmm. So it's not just red, it's having the color of fire. So it's very specific in what it's dealing with here. So we know that it was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Let's look at this. To take peace from the earth. Strong's G1515. Strong's G1515. 
Irene. Irene. A state of national tranquility. Exemption from the rage and havoc of war. So you are going to have havoc of war. Exemption from rage and havoc of war. Peace between individuals, harmony, concord, security, safety, prosperity, felicity, because peace and harmony make and keep things safe and prosperous of the Messiah's peace. Mm. The way that leads to peace or salvation of Christianity, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. The blessed state of devout and upright men after death. So we look at this word, Irene, all right? And we go back and we look that we're in. So he was given the power to take away the peace of God, the peace of Christ from the earth, and that they should kill. Let's see what this is. Kill. Here it is. Strong's G, 4969. Sfadzo. Sfadzo. To slay, slaughter, butcher, put to death by violence, and mortally wounded. Up until this event, whoever this rider is on the red horse, he didn't have that authority, but then all of a sudden here he comes and he gets to take the, the peace away from everyone and now causing people to kill each other. And there was given unto him a great sword. Let's look at the word great first. Okay, here it is. Strong's G, 3173, Megas, Megas. Of the external form or sensible appearance of things or persons, in particular of space and its dimensions as respects. Mass, weight, great, compass, extent, large, spacious, measure, height, long, stature, and age, great and old, of number and quantity, numerous, large, abundant, of age, the elder, used of intensity and its degrees with great effort. Of the affections and emotions of the mind, of natural events powerfully affecting the senses, violently mighty, strong, predicated of rank as belonging to persons, eminent, ability, virtue, authority, power, things esteemed highly for their importance, a thing to be highly esteemed for its excellence, splendid, great things of God's preeminent blessings. So the word great is pretty magnificent. So, it was a great, what? Sword. Let's look at the word sword here. Strong's G, 3162, Machera. Machera. That is a large knife used for killing animals and cutting up flesh. A curved sword for a cutting stroke. A straight sword for thrusting. So this is obviously probably feminine of a presumed derivative or figur figuratively war judicial punishment. Mm. Judicial punishment. So this red guy is the color of fire and he takes Christian peace, God's peace away from us and it affects our senses <laughs> Who is that? It has to be the devil. It has to be the devil. He's the only one that's been given that authority to come from the heavens. Remember that in Zechariah, it says, these are the four spirits that came from, be, from the heavens. All right, down. So the first one is Christ. 
The second one is Satan. Think about the Garden of Eden. Christ walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, had conversations with them. They were at complete peace. They could eat of any tree of the garden. And then there was two trees in the middle, one the tree of life, one the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Satan is given the authority to take away all that beautifulness and peace away from mankind on earth. Uh-oh. Has he done that? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's, that's already been done. What he's talking there is what the devil has been doing from, since the beginning uh, of uh, he's, uh, when all this, like we, we talked about, uh, that there was a war in heaven. And the devil was cast down in war. And in Revelation, it talks about the devil coming down, devouring. <laughs> so... Uh, that that uh that right there, we have talked about that, and um, let's see where that's at. Here we go. Revelation twelve. Uh, Revelation twelve talks about the birth of Christ. It talks about uh, uh the uh at the devil. Uh, just before the birth of Christ, casting down the one third of the angels with his tail, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, twelve four. Yep, got it up. And uh, and and uh, twelve five, and and she brought up a man child, which is Israel brought up a man child, which is Christ, mm -hmm. who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. That is the death of Christ. And the woman fled. Now, that's very interesting. Uh, the woman fled into the desert, uh, to the wilderness, where she has a, a place prepared of God. Now, that woman is Israel. It's, uh, it's Israel. It's when they left Egypt. Yeah, and uh, what's so interesting about Israel is that the Bible talks that there was a fight, and, and, and it talks about it here, that there was a, a fight between the devil and Michael, the archangel, and that fight was over the body of who? It was over the body of, of uh, Moses, right? What wasn't it? What, what was your question? I'm sorry, I was reading the verse. Well, it was over the fight of the body of, of, of Moses. That was the fight. Well, what is the body of Moses? It wasn't his physical body. It was the Israelites. That was the body of Moses, just like the body of, of, of uh, Christ is the church. The body of Moses was the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you look at uh, let's look at uh, at uh, twelve seven, where it says, "And there was a war in heaven, and Michael and his archangels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and he prevailed not; he lost the war, mm -hmm. and neither was there a place." found any more in heaven he was cast out of heaven why because he lost the war how did he lose the war the law the war was actually lost when christ died on the cross absolutely that's right mm -hmm. and when christ died on the cross we could see it in another section where he says at this moment the prince of the air will be cast down and that's in one of the gospels and i will come back to that uh, and uh, so we keep on going to nine. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and saying, just in case you, you doubt that that's who it is, <laughs> which uh, received, who's, who's deceived the whole world, he has cast out into the earth with his angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation 
What was the name of the first horse? It the was white Christ. Horse, Christ. Christ now, was riding on it, yes. Here it is. It's talking about the first horse right here. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, this is exactly the time when, when, uh, uh, when he saw this, the vision. He saw this vision. He's looking at it. And he says, look, I saw this. This is talking about the same time. I saw this horse. I mean, I, mean, I saw, I saw uh, salvation coming. And the kingdoms of our gods. Remember what uh, uh, what he talks about. That he's he, he's bringing this gift and all that, and the powers of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. He's already gone. He's already gone to heaven. There's there's no more that he could accuse anymore. Because why? Because of what we heard, read already of the white horse. That he has conquered what? The law. So he was cast down. Uh, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame. That's something that it was talked about there. The overcomers. It was just <laughs> talked about in the he different... He conquered. Yeah. He conquered. The overcomers. Him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of the testimony. And they loved... They love not their lives and to death. Therefore rejoice the heavens and ye that dwell in them. And now here, here comes the red horse. Here comes the red horse. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is, the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. Because his, he knows that he hath but a short time. And That's when the right. dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. So who was the woman that brought forth the man-child? It's the Jews. Mm -hmm. You see the persecution of the Jews. It's World been going. Killed every. It's just about eliminated all the Jews. Uh, so many places that the Jews are uh, in modern day times. Look at what's happening in happening in the Middle East. They want to kill the Jews. This is the persecution of the red horse. Now, now let's follow this because it goes on. It says, "Into the woman were given two wings of a great eagle." What is our animal symbol? Our animal symbol, the United States, is an eagle. Think yeah. about what happened after World War II. We were one of the main res ones responsible for getting them back into her place. Where is her place? Her place was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. All right. And uh, look at where it says, where she is nourished for a time and a time and a half. Mm-hmm. From the face of the serpent. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back. This is this is right on target, and you know you're starting to see exactly why the horses are being revealed right now. Because I think we're in the we're in the final hours. But here here it goes. We know that the white horse was Christ, and now we know that the red horse has to be Satan. There's no other way about it. He fit, he's the only one in all of history that fits everything, right? It's mm -hmm. about it. All right. And let's go on now. That means not only has the first seal been opened, that means the second seal has been opened. Let's go see what the third seal is. Now, this is really exciting. Third seal, Revelation 6 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld. And lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. What have you always heard the black horse preached as? And I think I even did it in the past myself. <laughs> Before God says, no, goofy, here's what it is. I don't know, Rick. Uh, there's just so many things out of it, but it's always been bad. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. This was a very deep mystery here for the black horse until 
I started reading in the Greek and it opens up like an open book. Let's go to it. Here we are in 6.5. We're going to go through the words here. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld in low a black horse. If we look at black, it is the Greek word. Strong's G, 3189, melos, melos. It means black. <laughs> <laughs> okay is it jet black or just black it's just black like black ink baby so there it is he be beheld and saw a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances here's where it gets real interesting this is strong's g 2218 strong's g 2218 zugas zugas are you ready for this one? What is the first definition? It's a yoke. A yoke. A yoke that is put on draught cattle. Metaphor used of any burden or bondage as that of slavery. Now it's starting to sound really familiar at this point. Wait, it even goes into more detail of troublesome laws imposed on one, especially of the Mosaic law. Hence, name is transferred to the commands of Christ as to contrast them with the commands of the Pharisees, which were veritable yoke. Yet even Christ's commands must be submitted to, though easier to be kept. And the last one says, a balance, pair of scales. Mm -hmm. Which is what the law is. It is. But could it have not been trans translated a little bit more like the 99% of the other definition we just read instead of the 1% pair of scales? Because in today's, today's language, a pair of scales, everybody's measuring what's going on here, and mm -hmm. it gets deeper. But you tell me, where else in the Bible is it referring to a yoke of slavery that's about the Mosaic laws? And and Hebrews everywhere, just about yeah. everywhere. Just about everywhere. The Gospels, Hebrews, Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians. I mean, you could go on and on and on. This is the Zugos that is dealing with Revelation chapter 6, verse 5, and he that set on him had the law in his hand. Hmm. So now here's where it even gets a little more interesting. Whoops. We're in 6.5. Now let's go to 6.6. Six. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. These, if we look at them, a measure is dealing with the Greek word. Strong's G, 5518. Choinix. Choinix. Okay. The Greek word means a, co a, a conix, a dry measure containing four cotyle or two Sitari, less than our quart or one liter, or as much would support a man a moderate appetite for a day. So it's basically what would support a man of a moderate appetite for a day. All I right? can see what this is already, Rick. <laughs> I'm all ears, brother. Tell me. It's, it's religion. It's, yeah, it's all dealing with the law. Yeah, it's, it's religion. Law. He has led the horse of religious a religiousness come into the world and that horse of religiousness is coming with the law 
Yes, and they're measuring your goods, your bads, your evils. Did you do this? Did you not do it? Your works, because if it's if, if it's a you're measured out your works, right? And that's yeah. where the great white throne yeah. judgment is going to be. It's going to measure your works, your 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 deeds. So anyway, that's what it says. But here's where it gets interesting. See that thou hurt not. The oil and the wine. Let's look at oil. Here's the Strong's Greek word. Strong's G, 1637, Elion. Elion. Now let's see what it says. Olive oil or for fuel for lamps, for healing the sick. For anointing the head and body at feasts. Mentioned among articles of commerce. Think about the oil. Where else was it used about lamps? Are your lamps full? For when the master comes, will you be yeah. ready? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's the... Uh it was the uh, the uh, women's that were about the brides. Uh, some of the brides and I have the lamp, uh, the oil for the lamps. Remember, and some yeah. of them did have it and were ready for the master. Right, and this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, see that you don't harm the Spirit. Yeah, uh, is it that cool? And. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at the last thing that you're not to harm, and that is the wine. It is mm -hmm. Strong's G thirty six thirty one, Oinus, Oinus, fiery wine of God's wrath. It's a primary word, or perhaps of Hebrew origin, wine, literally or figuratively, wine. Wait a minute. What is wine representation of? It's representation of God's wrath that he put in himself. Yes. In other words, what he's saying is there between the wine and the oil, what he's saying is that make sure you don't hurt the anointed ones from him. Yes, because the wine, we take wine at the, at the supper and communion, and we do that every Sunday at saintswithoutwalls.com. And yes. it's the representation of the new covenant. You are not to hurt the spirit and the new covenant. And, and, and what I see here is really that you're not to hurt us. It's people. Because yes. the spirit lies in his people. Right. So what he's saying there, what he's really saying there with the oil and the wine is the oil is used also for anointed. So what he's saying is be careful that you don't, you don't harm my anointed ones. <laughs> That's right. So in other words, the spirit who has the law gets to go forth from the heavens, but he can't hurt you if you have Christ. And that's why it says that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, at the end of times, that, that his elect will almost, almost uh, 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 be, uh, the elect will, will almost be fooled, but they won't be fooled because this makes very sense because he has put a dampener as to fooling the elect. And that's why he could say, you know, that, that at the end of times, that, that the elect will almost be fooled, but they won't be fooled. Yes. And when we say, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts, when we look at the beasts here, a living being, an animal, it's a living being in heaven. So we have a living being in heaven basically giving orders Okay, Mr. Law on the black horse, you may go forth 
and put all these burdensome laws on everybody on the earth, but you can't hurt the oil and the wine. And that even plays into why the Bible is true, that there are those before the law ever arrived that were considered righteous. So, Albert, this is absolutely unequivocally easily understood when we dive into the Greek, or at least that's the way I feel. What about yeah. you? Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible that uh, that it it, uh, it 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 doesn't represent really what you read. <laughs> they, you know, why I think it was done like that. I think it was meant for those who are truly seeking. I think it was meant for those who are truly knocking. And it wasn't, go wasn't going to be revealed over a radio program like God News Network until the time of the end is here. I would like to uh, uh, look at that area in the Bible where it talks about, uh, about the elect. If it was possible for the elect... So you're talking Matthew, I believe, 24, 24. Let's go there. Matthew, I think it's 24, 24. Let's go to 24, 1. 24, 24, is that what I said? Yeah. Yeah. He's doing, the, he's doing one of his famous end time, um, you know, where they were asking, when, when shall these things be, you know? And he right. says, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here's Christ, or there, believe it not. So if someone is saying to you, there he is, then immediately you know that he hasn't come. Because everyone's going to know. Why? Because it says, for there shall rise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. 24, 24. Matthew. Behold, I have told you before. <laughs> so in other words, don't be fooled. Mm -hmm. I've told you. Yeah. You're going to know when I'm here. There will be yeah. not be any question. Everybody on the planet's going to know about it. It isn't going to be like, well, there he is. He's over in the desert. No, it's going to be boom. Sorry, I'm here. You know what is what is is what is so uh this passage here twenty four what is so incredible is that talking about that horse that we were talking about both of these passages have to do with religiousness yes you see this one a prophet prophet of what it says there that it's not a prophet of Christ. So if, if it's not a prophet of Christ, who is he prophesizing for? And, for? and what is he prophesizing? And what he is prophesizing is the law. Yeah, He's coming back, just like what the Bible talks about. We have read in, in many passages uh, in, the, in the smaller books of First uh, John and all those little Jude and all those little small letters at the end about these people creeping into the churches, Bring in the law, and uh, and this is this is re remember what what Jesus Christ what we've been talking about that the time is now you know so all these horses have passed already they're here yeah. on the earth already and yeah. they're 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 creating havoc the horse of the law creating havoc through the churches uh, you know I mean they're here. <laughs> it even says in the definition, those burdensome laws of the Mosaic law. Yeah, and here's what's really interesting here. So, and I can't wait to summarize this, but we've got, we've got another horse to go through here. So let's, let's go back to chapter 6, and we're going to go back down, and we are um, on verse 7 now, chapter 6, verse 7. And we need to open the fourth seal. Now we're in the fourth seal. So that means seal one, seal two, and seal three are already opened. It gets better. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice, one of the fourth beasts say, come and see. 
Now, before I get into this one, I want to warn you out there that if you're easily offended, you might want to turn this program off because you're about to be offended if your religion happens to be one of the main religions on this planet. And I'm just reading the Bible, but I am going to give you my spiritual interpretation that God has given me on this. And it is going to be very offensive to a great number of people. But the good news is you have two choices. It's not the information that defines who you are. It's how you respond to the information. You can respond with violence and show that you do not have any intelligence or wisdom. Or you can respond with wisdom and choose to accept the love of the Holy Father who has made a way for you to have eternal life without killing people, without, without killing them. So here we go. Verse 7, when he'd opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. Let's see what this says. And I looked and behold, a pale horse well, let's see what color pale is. Here it is. Strong's G, 5515, Chloras. Chloras. What is Chloras? Albert, can you read the very first definition of what Chloras means? Uh, it says uh, green. <laughs> it's not pale. How do I know this? Doing a study, it is only used four times in the New Testament. The other three say chloros grass, chloros trees, chloros grass. Let me see. Pale grass? Hmm. I think not. It's green, but because they have never seen a green horse in their past, they wasn't sure, they were not sure how to translate that, because if we look here, the King James translates Strong's G5515 in the following manner, green three times, pale one time, but it's the same word. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with green. Mm -hmm. Would that be a safe assumption, Albert? Yeah. Just like it says uh, down there, greenish. <laughs> okay, it's greenish. Chloro is from the same as 5514, which is greenish. All right, here we go. Going back. Yep. Go ahead. What was the, uh, what was the uh, great word again for, pay, uh, for green? Chloros, right here. I wonder if that's the same one as chloroform. Chloroform. Yes, that's where we get our word chloroform from. By the time you track it back through the Greek language, it was chloros. That's where it came from, right on target. And chloroform is in what? Green plants. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, and I looked and behold, a green horse and his name that set on him was death. Let's see what this says. Strong's G, 2288, Thanatos. Thanatos. It's very specific. The death of the body. So it's a physically killing. It's a physical killing. So we have green and we have physical killing. That separation, whether natural or violent, of the soul and the body by which the life on earth is ended. That's physical death with the implied idea of future misery in hell. It's not only death, but it has the implied idea of future misery in hell. Now, before I go on, we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. Right? The 
where on earth, if we turn on the news anywhere, are there people killing other people thinking they're putting them into hell and at the same time putting themselves into heaven? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Middle East. Gets mm-hmm. better or worse. Depends on how you want to look at it. Since the netherworld, the abode of the dead, was conceived as being very dark, it is equivalent to the region of the thickest darkness, figuratively region enveloped in the darkness of ignorance and sin. Metaphor, the loss of life, which alone is worthy of the name. The misery of the soul arising from sin, which begins on earth but lasts and increases after the death of the body in hell. The miserable state of the wicked dead in hell. In the widest sense, death comprising all the miseries arising from sin as well as physical death as the loss of a life consecrated to God and blessed on him on earth to be followed by the wretchedness in hell. So we know where this death is supposed to lead, right? So he that sat on this green horse was death and hell followed with him. If we look up the word hell here, Strong's G86, it truly is Strong's G. Strong's G86. Hades. Hades, Thayer's lexicon, Hades, Hades. A lot of people pronounce it Hades, but it's not. It's Hades, okay? Name Hades or Pluto, the god of the lower regions. Ooh, Orcus, the netherworld, the realm of the dead. Later use of this word, the grave, death, hell. So I think we got at what this really means, right? It's pretty clear. And his name that set on him was death, and hell followed with him. Now, what's really interesting, I'm not talking about Islam. Even though the horse is green, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the spirit that goes forth from the heavens. So we're back to whom? The devil, I guess. Yeah, it has to be, right? Yeah. But, he's, but he's using green for a reason, and we're going to get into that. And death and hell followed with him, and the power was given unto them. What? Them? Power was given, death and hell followed with him, and the power was given unto them. Who's them? He gave a name to death and hell. And if we look at the verse, the the word death is capitalized and the word hell is capitalized. And when we look at the word death, again, we're going to see that it's a masculine noun. It's a person, place, or thing. Okay? And when we look at the word hell, we are going to see it is a proper locative noun. So this is a place. The other one could be a person, place, or thing, but this one is specifically a place. It, it, it even says it's a proper locative noun. So it is a place. All right? So, death and hell followed with him that sat on the horse. And power was given unto them. Who? Death and hell. If we look at them, it's... It's um, from the word autos, and it's himself, herself, themselves. So death and hell, themselves. Power was given unto themselves. Okay? So we're following that, right? Mm -hmm. Over the fourth part of the earth. Let's look at the fourth part. It's from the Strong's Greek word. Strong's G, 5,067. Tetartas. 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 Okay. It truly means just the fourth. But I I thought it was important that you guys saw that because it's truly tetartas. 
Okay. So going back to kill a fourth part of the earth and to kill with sword. Let's look at sword. Strong's G 4501. Hram fire. Hram fire. What's really interesting about this, it's different than the sword used earlier with the other horse. This yeah. one is a large sword, properly a long uh, Thracian javelin. Also, a kind of long sword won't to be worn on the right shoulder interesting to be worn on the right shoulder probably a foreign origin a saber a long and broad cutlass any weapon of the kind literally or figuratively what i want to do is pull this up to show you something here brother albert We will pull this up. And we have all these sabers and swords. Let me see. See if I have it here. How they wear it. Yeah. Okay. Bottom line is, who is using a sword on the planet today to kill people? Yeah, the Muslims. Muslims. The Muslims are using a sword to kill people. They just had another death due to a sword. Another yeah, one was... Fact, go ahead. Their emblems, if you see right here, you just passed that their emblems are two swords uh, crossing each other. And what's their dominant color? Green. Yes. Their dominant color is green. And when you go to uh, their um, mosques, the doors, fences, green, they have so much green in everything, and they have the swords. The saber is their one of their national emblems. It is, right? Yep, yep, it sure is. This is not difficult to find, but it's definitely that wants to be worn on the right shoulder, okay? Won't to be worn on the right shoulder. And when we look at this word here, it is specific, very specific. It's a figurative and literal sword okay so death and hell death and hell has the power to kill with sword so it's a spirit it's a spirit that's been given a name and it's capitalized it's a noun it's death and hell it's riding on a green horse killing people with with sword and with hunger. When we look up the word hunger here. Strong's G, 3042. Lemas. Lemas. Scarcity of harvest. This is probably from G, Strong's G, 3007, through the idea of destitution destitution hmm. think about how this all just totally rolls right into what's going on right yeah so they were given power to kill a sword and hunger who was given power death and hell islam is just the tool that death and hell are using I'm not blaming Islam. I'm not blaming Muslims. I'm blaming the spirit of death and hell because the fourth seal is open. Yeah. And yeah. with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, wait a minute. Here's another death. 
Strong's G2288, and it's the same death, but it's now lowercase. And with death and with beasts of the earth, let's look up beasts of the earth. Strong's G2342, Therion, Therion. When we look at that, a wild animal, a wild beast, a metaphor, a brutal, bestial man who is savage and ferocious. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just reading it, folks. I am just reading it. Now, here's the term wild beast. If we go back to the Bible again, And we look up Genesis 16, 12. Let's go to Genesis 16, 12. Let me go back there. Genesis 16, 12. This is referring to Ishmael. This is referring to Ishmael, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And he said, Hagar, Sarai has made, whence thou camest thou, and whither thou wilt go. And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai, or Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, and it shall not be numbered for the multitude. So Ishmael, through Hagar, is going to have seed as well that's going to be huge numbers and not able to be counted. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and you're going to bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard your affliction, Hagar. So he loved Hagar. He loves Ishmael. And he said, and he, Hagar, he will be a wild man, and his hand will be against every man. Hmm. Every man's against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. They toned this down. We're going to look at the interlinear. And he will be a wild man, and every man will be against him. Let's look up wild man. It's the Greek word. Strong's H, 6501. Perre. Perre. So Hebrew word. Second perre. entry. Perre. 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 Now, let's look at the definition here of what perre is in Hebrew. Number one, Albert, can you tell me what that says? A wild ass. A wild ass. So now we go back and we look, and there will be a wild ass of a man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brothers. Let's look up this, which is Strong's G will be against him. Every man will be against him. It's one little bitty word in Hebrew. Strong's H, 3027. Yad. Yad. Mm-hmm. Hand of man, strength of power, side, part, partition, various, sign, monument, part, fractional, part, share, time, repetition, axle, trees, axle, stay, support, laver, tenons, phallus, yod. Yod, a prominent word, a hand, the, op- the open one, indicating power, means direction, in distinction from 3709, the closed one. Used as a noun or verb. In a great variety of applications, both literally and figuratively, both proximate and remote, as follows. Able, about, arm holes, axle tree, because of beside border. So, here it is. Dominion. They are going to have dominion. Well, they have dominion. He will be a wild ass of a man. And man, his hand will be against every man. He's going to have dominion over other men. And against him, he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So he's going to dwell in the presence of everybody. Mm -hmm. So there it is used in the past. And we go back to Revelation. We're going to go back to chapter six. We're going to pop down here where we were. 
Revelation chapter 6, verse 8, green horse and his name that set on him was death and hell followed him. So those are, those are th- a place and a, a spirit. Mm-hmm. And power was given unto them, de- death and hell, over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, sword and with hunger and with death. And this sword is very specific to a saber <laughs> and mm-hmm. death with the beasts of the earth. The wild ass of men of the earth. Boy, I sure hope that the United States won't be involved in that fourth. <laughs> <laughs> it's already happening. Yeah. It's already opened. It's already occurring. It's already here. It's yeah. already done. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We are in the middle of the fourth seal right now. And here's where we're at. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Hmm. And they Hmm. cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So these are the people... How many people are being killed right now who are Christians with a oh, sword? A lot. A lot of Christians. In fact, they don't even talk about that. All they talk about is the other Muslims that are being, being killed and enslaved, but they never talk about the Christians. In fact, that was one thing that they were asking. Why is it that there's so many Christians in the Middle East that are in the same predicament as the Muslims, and the other ones, the only ones that they bring in are the Muslims. What happened to the Christians in the Middle East? Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Let's look at the terror attacks in the name of Allah. It's absolutely crazy, right? Hmm. It's just nuts. In the last From May 7th to May 13th, there's been 41 attacks, 384 killed, 452 injured, 15 suicide blasts in 15 countries from May 7th of 2016 to May 13th of 2016. That's not a very long time. Last 30 days, 186 Killed 1,433, injured 2,060, suicide blast 36, and in 23 countries. Hmm. Well, who fits the category that death and hell is using? And it's a green horse with a saber. Hmm. Sorry. But I know that I know there's only one that fits that. Yeah. So how many horses are we are we already up to? We are done with all four horses. So now when we go back, we say we got a white horse. That's Christ conquering, and he did it. We have the red horse. That was the devil who was given power to take peace from the earth. Then we go on to the third horse, and that was the law, burdensome laws against us. And we go to the fourth horse, and this one gets an opportunity to kill people because of the spirit of death and the place of hell followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, with death, and with the wild ass of men of the earth. Hmm. And when he'd opened the fifth seal, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. We're not done with the killing. It's going to happen a little longer. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of air, and the moon became as blood. This is not the blood moons like everybody thinks it is. This is a greater event. 
How do I know? Because if God created an earthquake at the death of his son on the cross, what kind of earthquake will be shaking the earth at the death of all of his sons? Hmm. Then the sun will become black and the moon will become red. This is an event I believe to be a physical event that is yet to occur that will be occurring as soon as this is fulfilled. Hmm. Wow. And all the stars of heaven fell to the earth as figs, tree cast her untimely figs. And when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heavens departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places and the kings of the earth and great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains and said into the mountains, rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stay <laughs> folks seal one's open seal two's open seal three's open seal four's open and we're in the middle of seal five where people are under the altars right now that's where we're at in this timeline the four horses have now been revealed to you, and they are easy to understand once you dive into the Greek language. Was that awesome or what? <laughs> that was incredible, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that preach, brother. How about you? No, never heard it. Never heard it. But can you, can you, do you see anything that I'm missing here? Help me. No, no. I think I think uh I think that you uh did a good job there uh brother Rick. I think that uh it was explained good and I think that there's really no mistakes in there. Wow. I really think that that's uh that is what it says. That is what it is. <laughs> it is what it, it is. <laughs> Well, brother, I really appreciate that, but you and I both know it came from God. And when he told me to study the Greek language on this, I, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be arduous. But when I dove in, I'm like, I got so excited, it became a treat, and it wasn't arduous at all. So I know we went a little longer, but I'm telling you, this was worth it. I think this is going to be one of those studies that's going to go forth and make a difference for people. Mm -hmm. So, wow, I don't even know what to say other than, you know, by that well, day. you know, uh, even though, even though we, uh, you know, we're heading to all this, all these things, all these rafts and all these horses, uh, uh, even though it's, it's, some of it is pretty bad news, but you know, you feel relief because a lot of people see a lot of things are going on in the world and they do not understand what's going on. And so, you know, sometimes you feel relief when you do understand what's going on. You see? Yeah, totally. And you know what? You can feel relieved if you're out there and you've got Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you are righteous. You have been saved. Stay at peace, brothers and sisters. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, I always give you an opportunity. Just say, I believe upon the name of Jesus with all my heart. I accept his death, his burial, his resurrection. And I give my life to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wow, Albert, what another great episode of God News Network. Appreciate you, brother being here and being part of the saints are rising thank you folks and have a beautiful and blessed day